Welcome to Topple Uncaged. I'm Steve Topple and you're locked on to the UK's hottest politics and music podcast. Each week I bring you the rawest takes on the big stories making the news, always joined by a very special guest. Then I pleasure your mind, body and soul with the freshest, most banging international music going. Uncaged. Listeners, you are in for a treat today. This interview was so good and so in-depth that I've split it up into two parts. My guest is an international reggae icon, but moreover than that, he is an incredible thinker. His views and philosophizing on issues is second to none. You are going to enjoy this so much, so here is part one of two. Me say illegal, illegal, yes. No worry about illegal. Ah. Uh. My guest on today's show has to be one of the most respected artists in the whole Roots movement. And it is easy to see why. I mean, not least, he has got this immense back catalogue, this this huge plethora of absolutely fantastic work. But as an artist, he just personifies everything Roots should be about. His music is always top-class instrumentation, production and arrangement. He has a voice which manages to soar across subject matters and styles but moreover it's the subject matter which is crucial to everything he does because it is extremely extremely conscious with mind-blowingly profound lyrics at times and also extremely moving at points as well i mean he is iconic in my opinion and i think a lot of people would agree with that therefore it is a really really privileging experience to be able to have this artist on the show and it's a pleasure to welcome to the first time to the top on cage podcast it is incredible Micah Shemaya. Micah, thank you so much for coming on. I am really, really, really pleased to be able to speak to you. It's a great, great to have you here. So thank you. Yeah, I'm going to give thanks to man. And, uh, you know what I mean? Give thanks for the, well, I would call them superlatives, you know what I mean? But give thanks, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Big respect, man. I, I, I can give you more superlatives if you want, Micah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we well, give thanks, man. And the roots, it's rough, you know, it's a rough road. So sometimes people don't really view it like that, you know. So we give thanks for the ones that do, you know. My my absolute pleasure. No problem at all. And as I said, I mean, you're, you're not least your back catalogue is immense, and we'll talk about that later. But but you are you are roots personified, and I want I want to talk about that um, a little bit later on. But let's let's get some housekeeping out of the way. Um, I've interviewed a lot of artists over the past sort of few weeks and a lot of them have been doing the festivals obviously because it's been that time of year you've been out on the road how's how's festival season been for you this year because I mean the sort of the everything with um, the revival movement that's going on is kind of blowing up a bit at the minute I mean you we've got a lot of artists from that movement who are making big strides um, and from what I've seen on my Instagram and other artists I've spoken to um, festivals this year seem to have been sort of jam-packed and really good vibe how's how's festival scene been for you for you this summer micah yeah it was great you know i mean um second year on the road with my band you know it's always really it's a dream but it's more than a dream and it's it's the completeness of the sound to tour with your band you know so Mm. it's the second year on the road with my band you know and this year we had less festivals because um start the sad thing about the music industry at this point is that you know, most of the promoters would like to see, you know, me just being booked as a name, you know, as Michael Shamaya and not as my band with the Jedites, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's it's more obviously economically better for them and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I hope people understand that, you know, the complete sound, the, the, the energy, the vibration, it, it really comes in a package, you know, it, it's the, the, the song and, and the rhythm are never separated. We do that. But but that's what we feel. That's what makes the whole, you know. So so when I make the music, I make the music in that respect. So you know, touring with the band is the magical thing, you know. And and t- touching the festival stages in front of all of those people, is, that's a dream for any youth from from the garrisons in Jamaica, from from where I came from, you know. So yeah, man, it's always magic for me, you know. And and, and more so, I look at it. In, in a in a in a higher perspective, you know. For mm. me, it's more than just going on the stage and performing, you know. For me, it's really, you know, me and my band were trying to create a movement of of just 
a unifi unifying energy, a unification amongst the people, amongst the festivals, amongst the, you know, remove the competition, you know what I mean? Just just make it that these these places, these spaces are, are made to unify, are made for, for people from all over the world to come together and just balance under one banner, you know? So to, to, to take part in that is like magic. It's like taking part in the world that we want, you know what I mean? So who wouldn't love the festival season? You know I mean, it's, it's magic. But what I say is that we should be doing this every day. We should be living like this every day. You know. So yeah, man, that's it's, it's great every year to be on the road. I mean, the festivals, you know, magical. No, absolutely. You made a really, really important point in there, which I'm just, I have a script, Micah, as, as, as we discussed before of questions. I'm going to, I can tell already, I'm going to end up ripping it up and we're just going to chat because there's something immediately I want to pick up on what you said, but I will save, save that for later and we'll try and get some of my scripted questions done. But I'm going to tell, right. I'm going to love chatting to you. We're going to be here for ages. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's been going well for you and also much respect for your honesty as well, because if they don't want to book you, you without your band that's their problem then isn't it quite frankly so i mean i'm glad i'm glad that you you take that stance but we'll get on to that a bit later um because you've, yeah, you've yeah. piqued my interest with something um i want to talk about let's get on to what you're doing currently music wise um rainbow station was your latest release absolutely loved it brilliant brilliant track great and also <laughs> as always with you when you release visuals to go with the track you don't do it by half the visuals are always stunning and it was a great video Video to go with it as well but I'm interested because um, it's been promoted as being from the Forgotten Scrolls which is a trio correct me if I'm wrong it's a trio mm -hmm. of vinyl 12 inch releases Release. which are coming up yes. so it's a series of yes. three releases um, I I'm, don't know anything about this so I want to know exactly what's going on what are the Forgotten Scrolls what can we expect from you with these and what was your kind of thinking behind releasing this series of records um, well, firstly, I was approached by um, Just Solid Rock and uh, Music, who, who um, they, they, I think they've been doing a lot of root stuff over the years, you know, did some stuff with Apple Gabriel and, and some stuff with Chesedek and very mm. strong stuff that I love, you know, I like, I like when people pay attention to, to, to the roots, you know, pay attention to the music on a whole, you know, that means yes. you try to get the best result, it's not, you know, I mean, we're not, none of us are born perfect, but we try to be, you know, so we can get the best the best out of ourselves, you know. So I, I, I was attracted to that with the Just Solid Rock movement. They approached me to do some songs, and then I just thought that, you know, doing these kind of songs with them, maybe, you know, I should try and theme it. Normally, I only theme my albums and, and, and singles that I'm, I'm putting out, but, you know, I, <clears throat> I just thought that let's give, it, let, let's give it a theme. What is happening in reggae music today? And you know, what I see is that, you know, we, we're, we're losing track of, of, of what the essence of reggae is, you know. Mm. Reggae was really made to, to keep the, the people on a spiritual balance, you know what I mean? As we know, religions and all of these labels, this, this stuff that we've created for ourselves, they've failed us, you know what I mean? They've, yes. they've only divided us and they've only put us into different, you know, regions of the world saying that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm holding my stance, you know, when that doesn't make any sense, you know, because we all need each other. We all have skills and values that each other are going to benefit from and should benefit from, you know? So it's just the thought of reggae music and what we stand for and what originally what we are to be doing in the world, which is to, 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 to putting that, 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 that memory, that, that, that whole enlightenment of, of connection and just remembering who we are, you know, remembering to stay balanced every time, you know, these things are simple because we see that the world is going wild, you know? So, the simple messages that reggae bring, you know, I mean, they're just, they're just to remember, just to keep us balanced. Remember where we're coming from. Remember that we need to, we need to, 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 to lay a proper road to walk on. You know, what I mean, to tomorrow we're gonna get out of our beds, go to the gate, walk on the road. So, so the kind of, of of life that we live today is is tomorrow is very dependent on that. You know, what I mean, so reggae music on a whole is for that purpose for me. And then the Forgotten Scrolls. I just thought that we were forgetting these things, you know what I mean? So I, I made a body of work that really is, is, is really about that. You know, the song Zion Gates, you know, obviously you see the teachings of, of His Imperial Majesty, what we learned as a, as a Rasta youth growing up in the 12th tribe. I learned that it, it was the, the age protected, the sick nourished, infants cared for, you know, all of these things. These things are the very simple rules of, of how we trod. And, and it's very innate. It's not really like something that, 
we should fight to do. But nowadays we have to fight to do it because they're taking it away from our system. Our, our whole spirituality is being changed. It's being morphed into something else, you know. So mm. the Zion Gates, the Rainbow Station, Rainbow Station obviously is a piece of work speaking to, you know, that, that energy that, that embodies the naturality of a man, you know, the natural man, the goodness of a man, the connection to the Most High. You know, everybody can have their own rainbow station, but I'm just showing people that, you know, have a rainbow station, have a place, you know, where where it's 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 not all world, it's not all commercial, it's not all go 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 go, you know what I mean? So yeah, and so that is also part of the scroll. Then I have a song called "Carry Me Love," which is going to be coming up next. It's a, it's really a, a love story about you know a man and a woman, you know, love that is 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 basically beyond the cages of, of what we know through TV and through media, mm. you know what I mean? Because love is, is, is an experience. It's something that you go through every day. Love finds a different path tomorrow than it did today, you know what I mean? And, and I think the media is trying to really make us believe that love is a static thing and, and we should all conform to that static thing, you know what I mean? But it's not that. That is why we all can't stay in love and we're all losing our relationships and all that shit. Love, love is a moving thing. You know, it moves through the bad times and also moves through the good times. It takes different forms. So the song Carry Me Love is for that purpose. Then we have uh, Roller Coaster, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is, yeah, that's another song coming up. Roller Coaster, in, in, people, I think people would connect to that song a lot because I'm really speaking about, you know, having that, that, that experience of today being a great day and you just feel so up and so lively and, and what am I going to do? I can do anything. And then tomorrow... It's just dull and gloom, and you're like, oh, shit, the world is ending, and, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> very so, true. You know, it's very true, man. We all go through it, and we okay. need to just recognize, you know, what these things are and, and how to, to approach them with not not an energy of, of trying to discard any of them because they're they're there, and if they're there, that means they're real, and they're, they're put there for a reason to pilot us, you know what I mean? So it's just to understand them. So I wrote that song, Roller Coaster, mainly because of my relationship with my wife and, and just my whole life, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like that, especially in the Roots game, you know? Some days you feel like, yeah, you know, the people are giving you strength, yeah, and then some days it's like, wow, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, what, what, what else do I need to do, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. And then you have um, When You Write. And when you write, you know, sometimes you feel like you're always getting a fight, you know, because you're doing the, when I do, I'm doing roots and I'm not doing music and, and, and messages and lyrics that I made up, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, That's the thing that I, I sometimes I wonder about what is happening in the world because we don't make up this stuff you know this stuff is written in bibles it's written in great books it's it's come out of the mouths of of, of champions of good you know mm. what i mean all over the years you know so it, it 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 it's a part of us you know so when we when we sing it and when it, when it comes from us it's only because i am taking my time to be more observant of that part of myself you know it's not necessarily that i'm different from anyone else you know what i mean it's just that i'm observing that part of myself more so i can bring it to the people because i believe that the people need that at this time you know so yeah so you know when you write is that song and then i have uh strictly rubber dub is also on it which is a, a strictly dance vibe rubber dub yeah. it's my it's my take on on what on what dancehall music, you know what I mean, should really represent. Not the beat, mm -hmm. but but the lyrics, you know what I mean? Creativity, you know, personified, you know, not 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 lewdness, not not trashing someone, not not trying to debase anyone, but but to create. You can look at a shoe and create a song about a shoe, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean just just yeah, just by Great the way analogy. how you are. exactly, you know what I mean? So it's stuff like that, you know. I, I, I'm trying to challenge myself and challenge even my friends and other people because I noticed that even in the reggae revival, which they, they, they labeled us some years ago when we started coming out, you know, mm. there, there is not a competition, but there is a, a very healthy uh, a, a sharpening going on all the time, you know, because all my friends, they watch my, my music and, all, and I watch all their music and, and I buy all their music. Yeah. I have every one of my friends' albums on my, my, my laptop. And, and so it, it's, a, it's not... It's not that you're competing. It's just that it's just that you you stay you stay sharp. You know, yeah. and you always stay sharp. And these youths, they're, they're very good, very sharp in minds. It's not just music. Minds are very sharp, clicking. You know, so you want to always try to do things that are going to spark them in a certain direction and help them. Because I'm I'm like an older 
version of of of, of people like Chronics and 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 you know what I mean and and Jal and and, and you yeah. like you still, yeah yeah Isa and yeah so I have to set an example all the time you know so when I make the music I try to to create a spark so they could see oh yeah Micah is going in a certain direction now you know yeah you know maybe I could challenge that I could challenge myself with that because you know it's that's just it and I'm very deep obviously people know that by now you know so. What 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 a lot of other artists, or a lot of my friends would lack in depth, you know, they can they can always listen to my music and see the direction and and the way how I bring bring the lyrics from from the depth to to where it is, you know, to to into a song because these things are not just made up. As I say, they're 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 from a certain depth. They're from a pool of knowledge that is there for all of us. But I just I focus on it so that I could I can have you know, the, the resource to use because you need it, you know, and the world needs it. And Jack put it there because he, he's not going to tell you that, oh, go and, and use the resource. He just put it there. So who, who see it, who hear it, I'll go touch it. I'll go be a part of it. You know what I mean? And I count myself as a part of it. So, you know, I'm, I'm always going to be an example, always going to be, as, as a lot of my brethren say, a conscience, a constant mirror, as, as they would call me today, you know, in, in the reggae music world, you know. And I, 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 I never thought of it that way. I never wanted that for myself because that creates a massive struggle as well. When you're a constant mirror to, to your friends and your family and even yourself, mm. it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very hard road, you know what I mean? But I, I now have accepted that, you know, and I, I, I fully give thanks for that. And I want to live that life because it, it, it shows me that it, it, at the end of the day, even if a lot of people don't, take heed or, or, or take advantage of the fact that you have people living this type of life, then at least it, it will help me and people close to me to, to just walk a more, a more, you know, just and cleaner road, you know, a more, you know, balanced road towards the Almighty and towards the Zion mind, you know. So, yeah, yeah, that's that. No, absolutely, absolutely fascinating insights on the revival movement. I'm, I'm really interested and we'll come back to that a bit later, yeah. actually. If you want to take a break, go and grab yourself a tea, coffee, any other liquid or any other kind of refreshment because me and Micah will be back in just a few seconds. I'm just again. I'm just chucking the script away, um, and I'm I'm quite interested actually. Um, when I write, did you say that's going to be one of the tracks off 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 the Forgotten Scroll? By, by the way, I have to say I I love the notion behind the project as well, the Forgotten Scrolls, because you are right. There's so much so much is being lost from what Roots was originally about to s- some of the areas it's kind of morphed into now. Um, yes. I think it's absolutely genius, genius idea. Love it. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And we'll come on to that a bit later. But I was I was interested when I write, um, and you quite rightly pointed when, out when when you write when, when you when, write when you write, yeah. Like when I'm saying, write. it's like a, it's like a yard talk. It's like we say, like yard people say, when you write, ah. you get in a fight. You know what I mean? So that, yeah, that's okay. when you write. Got you. When you write, um, I'm interested in that. But moreover, your what you said about you, yourself and your influence on the revival movement, because that's why I called you so respected and iconic, because because you are of a, a certain caliber that that has that influence. I mean, does does the fact that you everything you do is driven by your your spirituality and your belief systems and and your consciousness, and the fact that also, as you quite rightly point out, you you have this, this deep self-awareness of the impact that your music has look kind of like the, a pebble and the ripple in a pond that that exactly. happens from it i mean is it your is it your spirituality that keeps you going because that must be that must be very demanding at times do you know what i mean it it, it must be to to constantly know that um is yeah. it the fact that you know you're doing it for the right reasons and that it's your it's ultimately your spirituality that is guiding you that, that keeps you going and keeps you producing this iconic content all the time um i don't know that's a rough question and i ask Sorry. myself that same question a lot of times you know um, well, I think there's a combination of things, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I would say my family is, is a very big part of what keeps me going. My wife, my son, my, my mom, my dad, you know, right now, right now my, my biggest goal is to get, get my family to, to a place in Africa where we have uh, just a space for ourselves, you know, because I don't believe in singing all these songs and charting this road and then you don't, you don't really manifest it, you know, right now, if I speak to my mo- my mother right now, she... 
she she it, it, if she speaks about Africa, she starts to cry, you know, because she's, you know, your parents go through that that period of life where them start, you know, go through the ailments and thing, and them have sometimes get sick and stuff like that, mm. you know, the the real painful time of life, you know, where you wonder, you know, when when is the day when my mom is gonna be in the hospital and I'm gonna have to rush somewhere, or, you know. So when you talk about Africa, which is her chart, that is her. That is her life chart since she was a teenager. She and my father, you know. So mm. they want to reach to Africa. They, they, they want to reach home, as as we would say, you know. They want to find a base, you know. So them thing that to to be honest is what keep me going, you know. What I mean, and then when as it as it touched on the festival season earlier, you know, that's a magical thing because when we go on the festival season, because of the way I chart and the way we do this music, we we end up charting a little bit different from most of the artists in the music business, you know, like like in, like in the last last tour we were in Frankfurt, that was our base, you know, big up to the Virgin Kurt, you know, who is a magical Virgin, you know, we have, we have some people in, we, it's a Jaffet Virgin, and that's what we call white people, you know, as they would call them. When I was growing up, we never had a difference, it was just Jaffet, Hamsham and Jaffet to me, so growing up in the Turb tribe kind of grounded me to not see race, but to see people, you know, so I yeah. give thanks for that too. Um, so in Frankfurt, I have this bridging and we 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 base and we went, we go to a place that they they you know you know they drink a lot in in Germany you know they like do. a lot of beer yeah they love beers you know and we're not trying to fight nobody's culture so we go to this place and you know there's a drinking place and stuff and we did there and you know we just have vibe with them because this is his place you know so and it's the only place that he goes that kind of have an outdoor vibe it's like a Caribbean vibe to him you know so because he's our friend you know we have to hold a vibe with him in a theme space you know so we go do that. I would do that a couple of times and a couple of times and I would say to him, say, yo, what, what do you think about doing a, like an acoustic show here? Like, you know what I mean? Mm. See if we can get, get the people some roots vibes and some real nice, wholesome, unifying energy. You know what I mean? And he, he was with it and he spoke to the owners of the place and we did it very spontaneously and the place was rampart and it was wow. a crazy, crazy, crazy vibe, you know? So as I said, being on tour gives you opportunities to do stuff like that, you know? So... The, the whole connections in in the in the music business the whole the whole movement of it that the, the the journey the, the the lives that you end up connecting with you know it's it's all for for the magic it's all what makes it makes it real it's what makes you want to go on you know what i mean for me you know i have a lot of people speak of a lot of other things i've spoken to artists that tell you that you know when you go on a show and you get 2 grand for a show mm. that is like that is like you're like like you're getting paid back your life energy that you give to the crowd or you give to, I don't look at it like that. You know what I mean? I, I, I give to the crowd freely from, from my life energy. You know what I mean? If I, if I was to go on a stage and not get paid two grand, but when I came off, I wouldn't have to worry about my wife and my son in Jamaica and then me doing anything at all to eat and to live. Yeah, I wouldn't need to get two grand. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that, that's the world that I want to get to. You know, people don't understand, you know, the music of reggae music is made to get to that world. It's not made to stay here and people becoming stars and blah, blah, blah. No, that's, that's crap. You know, mm. stars, stardom and all this stuff was, was really made and it's made by us. And it's made by us because we need comfort and we need people to look up to. We need role models. We need people to help us to, to bring us back from the depths of where we're going with our own emotions and whatever, you know what I mean? So all this stuff is made for a world, for a particular world and the world that we now live in. But in the ideal world, this stuff doesn't exist far, you know what I mean? This this people chasing um, um, figures of, of, of popularity and it doesn't exist in the real world. In the real world, we're all equal and we all have a magical inside, a magical thing that we all are here to contribute to make each other feel more uplifted and more, and even ourselves, you know? So in the, that's in the ideal world for me. So I wouldn't need to be collecting money, you know what I mean? I wouldn't need to be doing nothing else but just, you know, bringing that spirit from myself and then people would just connect with it and naturally. So. I, that's what I. That's why I sing. You know what I mean. So as I say, these things are what keep me going on. You know what I mean. People might think it's cliche or, or it's 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 not because a lot of my friends think that it's too, it's too, you know, too honorable or too mm. too, you know what I mean. Like you know, come on, man, you, you you can't be really be that that stupid. Like you know what I mean, that gullible to believe that that world exists. You know what I mean. Well, yeah, but I do. You know what I mean. When I was growing up in the twelve tribes, I saw thousands of people standing and singing one anthem, praying one voice, one way, this thing resonated through the universe. I know that, you know what I mean? This is what birthed people like Bob Marley and people like that, which, which touched the world so deeply, mm -hmm. still today. So I can't act like that is not real. I can't 
You know, that is the most profound thing to me that has ever touched this world. Incidentally, I was born the exact year when Bob Marley was, was died, you know what I mean? 1981. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? I went to the funeral as a as a as a two month old or three month old kid. You know what I mean? My mother's arms, you know, twelve tribe in Amabana. You know, so we, we, I, I I can't do anything else. You know, so as I say, I give thanks that I never had the spirit to leave the road that I was given. You know, the road that that you're given in this life, if you stay on it. And this is, I implore anybody in this world. It's not about Rastafari. It's not about no labels. It's about a, a connection with your inner soul, that innate feeling that is inside of you, that voice that is inside of you, that, that you get a road to walk on when you're born. There's a road that everyone gets. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if you focus and you find it, stay on it. Because if you stay on it, you're good. You 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 will have less of the stress that you think that the world is giving to, to a, a lot of people. You know what I mean? And it's because of that. It's because we are so distracted with what they're telling us, with, with the avenues that they're giving us. Oh, everyone, oh, I can be what I want to be. Oh, I can, I can be a dog if I want to right now. Oh, oh, no, I can be a cat if I want to. That's, that's crap. You know what I mean? That's bullshit. You know, people need to realize that we all have a role to play in this great scheme of, 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 of this, this life. You know, if you notice, you, you grow up and you think that, oh, I'm an only kid and I'm just going to party and I'm just going to get drunk and blah, blah, blah. And one day... You know, a girl knocks on your door and she's like, I'm pregnant. And all of a sudden your life changes and you become something that you never even thought that you knew. You become a dad. You become probably even the best dad in the world. You know, these things happen to people every day because it is there. It is it is something that you cannot avoid. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you fight it, if you fight against it, that is when your life goes into the biggest stresses that you could ever imagine. You know, that is when nothing seems like it's going wrong because you're actually fighting the road that you should be walking on. You know what I mean? So, you know, because of, I know all these things because I've, I've been bred in all this knowledge and all this, this stuff, you know, I just made up my mind very young not to disrespect it. I, I honored it. I, I, I realized that it was a gift and I and I, I saw that I had to share it and I had to just play my role and, and if I got this knowledge and if all of my, my life was aligned in this way, then I have to play this role. You know what I mean? I wasn't born a Marley, but everywhere I go people think I'm a damn Marley. You know what I mean? It's 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 the most unbelievable thing, you know. I mean I'm not I'm not trying to emote that energy. I'm not trying to, I've never I can't even play a Bob Marley song on my guitar. People ask me that all the time, like how can you not okay. play a bug down? You know, I've ne- I tried as a youth to not play anyone's music. You know, I just, I love, I listened to, Shade was my best singer. Bob Marley wasn't even my best singer. He was my, my best spiritual teacher. But Shade was the, the most beautiful toned voice I've ever heard. It was a voice that put me in that calm space, you know. So music is for that purpose, you know what I mean? But I tried not to, to sing other people's songs. I tried not to sing like other people, you know, because I believe that, the only way I could create that total originality to fit with my very weird today, I see that spiritual energy is to just not follow the mold. You know what I mean? I had to bring something out of myself, you know, so, and then it worked for that reason. You know what I mean, so all of that, all of these things, you know, make up that, that one question, you know, how do I keep on the road? How do I not, you know, just fall prey to a lot of the things that are happening? You know what I mean? I have so much responsibility. I've I've been given so much weight of knowledge, so much weight. I think it's it, it's actually a gift, as I said. So I can't disrespect that, you know. what I mean, and then I have my family. I have I have principles that I have to look up to. I have to to hold, you know. What I mean, my son is now born. I have, you know, I've, after the years of wanting to have children, you know, they just blessed me with a son. You know, me and my wife. So. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So you know, what I mean, these things just make it more and more. You know, like a, a real trad, you know, something real, something tangible, something that you can touch. And when you have that, you're not going to throw it away. You're not going to be stupid and walk away from it, no matter how hard it is, you know, because you can taste you can taste it, you can touch it. It's real. And so many people are grafting for something like that right now in this world that I can't give away what, I, what I've been given, like a gift. You know, I never had to fight for it. I was born with that, you know. Absolutely. Can you come on every week? to my show and we'll just we'll just talk like this it's absolutely brilliant well i could I just have, i could have you on every single week micah and we could just discuss different things that's absolutely 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 beautiful beautiful um almost diatribe but a positive one there 
Time for a break. Press pause if you need to, because me and Micah will be back with more chat in just a little while. I, there's something I picked up on and I, I just want to touch on it because I, I think it's, you made and again an extremely important point the whole notion of of celebrity um, it's it, it it's kind of always it's an extreme contradiction to me whenever artists who are proclaiming to be roots or, or reggae orientated etc 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 and you see them going after the views on YouTube going after the awards going after this that and the other and it's this complete contradiction and I wonder sometimes I wonder how they go to sleep at night almost because they they they've 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 all right they've to, they've actually um, condition their minds to believe and, and the world is with them so it makes it easier you know they mm-hmm. actually believe that you know like you have to you have to live true you know but these guys think that all right if i'm a roots artist you know then because like recently a virgin told me i wear a red green and gold brief mm-hmm. you know and i had to say well i actually my hat my shirt my pants my briefs my underpants and even if, if I could get my shoes in my house and my car and red, green and gold, I would as well, you know what I mean? So but 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 he's saying that to show me that I'm I'm too rasta, I'm too spiritual, ah, okay. I'm too deep. Yeah, exactly. So mm. but but a lot of them believe now that they have they have taken on the image and the mantle of of, of this whole chart, this Rastafari, that they can now alter it in some way. They can they can, they can, they, they're now the face of it, you know what I mean? And and that's where the thing gets gets sticky. Because if you notice, Bob Marley, check the greatest exponent of reggae music in the history of what the, 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 the system, even the system, not even our system, the system that exists gave him that title, you know what I mean? Yeah. And check his life, check every interview that he, he did and he asked him about all this fame and shit. He always, always is saying, yo... You know, give praises to the Almighty Father, you know, because I him give me this road, I him give me this 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 power, you know what I mean? And and without him then you wouldn't even know me. You would you probably does have me like a dirty foot boy from Change Town and it's true. Mm-hmm. You know? So that is what the difference is between a roots artist that is is totally in sync with the spirituality that was given to him as a gift to to actually just emanate. You're you're we're just here as a vehicle to emanate this light. So that we can be actually someone that that like you, you everybody who's walking in the dark. You know I mean, this world. If 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 let there be light was not a word that we knew, we wouldn't even know that there existed light. You know what I mean? Everybody's in the dark, even with even with the light, even with the daylight. Everybody's still in the dark. If you know what I, what I mean, yeah. everybody's living in the dark. So re- reggae music, Rastafari is a vehicle. We are all vehicles to stand at the at at this tunnel or wherever we are. Hold up this lamp. So all the people can see where they're going. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. You know what I mean? But the the, the, the artists and 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 the the whole adoration and all that crap that people put on artists are making them believe now that they are gods, that they're actually wielding this power. Mm. That that this is that not just coming through them and then going to the people. They are the power. You are not the power. You cannot be the power if if someone else is born tomorrow that is gonna affect the world even more than you would ever did you know what i mean yeah 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 it's as simple as that so if an artist comes in 1965 elvis presley and he's uh, you're the greatest artist in the world right now everybody's talking about you but okay in 1970 here comes a new superstar you know what i mean the superstar has 20,000 more people than you had when you when you were you were just like maybe you know at the 5,000 people following you this artist has 20,000 you know what i mean the next artist comes. He has a million people. The next artist has 10 million people. So if, if we gauge life like the popularity of what we, we, we get to do, then we become stupid. We become slaves to this industry, become slaves to a music business and not the soul that is inside us to create something that can touch people's souls, touch people's hearts. So then the value of your 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 whole work and your whole life chart becomes your monetary gain, becomes how, how many magazines you, you, you come in, becomes... If you if you if you end up on the billboard, you know what I mean. If I do, I get a number one. You know what I mean. Do I? I don't play on radio stations in Jamaica. I don't care. You know what I mean. I would love to because it would get to more people. But I can't make that the focus because 
I'm going to then start to think that, okay, if I play on the radio in Jamaica, then I'll be a hit superstar artist. And then, then it goes on and on. I'm, I'm going to want to do a collab with Rihanna. I'm going to want to start chilling with Drake. It's no, no, there's no problem to par with these artists, but it's a problem when you try to par with them for their fame or to connect to that kind of elitism of kind of a mentality, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If if they if if some if in some way, shape or form, then Drake or Rihanna, one of these superstars in music, end up in the circle that you're in, and you're you guys are chilling together, and you're you're drinking a, a, a roots wine together or or something, it it can only mean that Rastafari and reggae music in the in the in the calmness and the 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 the, the, the spirituality and the the, the marijuana. That, that, that calms you, that the world is now jumping on, making billions of dollars, turning into some kind of, of, of commercial industry, still not healing the people. You know, if all of these things are, are, are bringing these people into that nice little space and you're all chilling together, then that is what is supposed to happen. That means that they have humbled themselves to the fact that there is something greater than money. There's something greater than having the biggest cars. There's something greater than, than, than a Lamborghini. You know what I mean? There's something greater than being the biggest name in the world. You know what I mean? There is something greater than that. And and sitting and chilling and reasoning with a Rasta man in Jamaica, always and through the history of time, it is always shown and will always show that it that something is in fact greater than these things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because the knowledge, the the, the earth, the, the 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 in touch that you become is so much more for your family, for your friends, for everyone. You know what I mean? That is the real life, you know? So that's for me, that is it. And the, the artists have lost that. All, most of my friends, to be honest, are now entrapped because they're, they're, they're Rasta youths that are trying to still learn of Rastafari, trying to still connect to that really wholesome energy that keeps them in line. They're fighting that, and they're also fighting to become, you know? Because the world shows you that you were nothing, so you have to be here to become. If you don't reach there, then you're still nothing, you know? So, mm. you know, a lot of us have not removed that barrier, that, that, that thing from our brain. So we're still fighting to become. So a lot of my friends, a lot of the artists in reggae music, a lot of the, the so-called spiritual superstars of reggae music are still fighting to become this superstar. <laughs> it's a complete... All, it's, a com it's, it's this mad dichotomy, it really is. That's exactly. Exactly. It's total madness because you have fame, you have money, you have everything, but you still, but it's not their fault. As I say, it's not, it's as if the, the, the industry creates a regurgitating monster. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like no one can avoid becoming that monster because of, as I say, the adoration and the, the reach that you're trying to get, you know, spirituality is supposed to base you. That means there is no reach further than the person in front of you. So if this man is standing in front of me and he needs help and he needs a good word and a good guidance, that is the reach of spirituality. That is the reach of reggae music, of Rastafari what is in front of you so if you reach into a, a space with 10 million people it's the same kind of thing that you're emoting to one person that you're emoting to 10 million people so the reach is not you don't want to be i don't want to be on the moon i don't need to be michael jackson i don't need to be bob marley i don't need to be nothing like that what i need to do is actually be what i'm singing is actually trod what i'm singing so that the person in front of me can see can actually see the manifestation of what I'm saying to them and actually believe in it and actually have some sort of vibration when they reach home to say, okay, that might be true or that might be something I need to look into. Not, 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 not even going as deep as, as, as doing it like you're some robot, but just, just to have it in your mind as something that, yeah, that I can look into that, you know what I mean? So... I believe that that is what is missing from a lot of the, the artists of today in, in reggae music that claim to be, as you say, claim to be spiritual. You know, they, they're, they're, they're so much caught up with, with what the game is offering, what the, the music industry is offering. Like, it's like the devil said to Jesus Christ, you know, bow down and I've, I'll give you everything. Mm. You know, you're saying, so, and, and if you look at it in, in the context of, of, of what it is, because it, it, it's a ridiculous this piece of literature, like, to be honest, because if Jesus Christ is, is the son of God, he, he, he's God in, in manifestation on this plane. So the literature alone to say that some being is going to say to God who owns everything to bow down to me and I can give you all of this. 
You know what it's I mean? A contradiction so it's, in terms, isn't it's it? A, yeah, exactly. So the literature, it's, it's total contradiction. It's ridiculous. But it's there because it shows something. And this is where mankind is separated. This is where you have people that see and hear and know and people that are just blind. Because there is something within it. You know what I mean? And if people look good, then you'll see it. You move away from the ridiculousness of what it's saying. You know what I mean? And that's exactly what the music industry is doing to our, our, our budding artists, our aspiring so-called superstars today. Because Bob Marley's music is not the greatest because of no reason. It's the greatest because it's, it's the most emotionally tapped music. It's the most it's music that you can feel the most. <laughs> that's why it sells the most. That's why he became so popular. You know what I mean? Regardless of the fact that he came from Trenchtown, from the dungles of nowhere, had nothing. Most of the reggae artists, Burning Spear, um, Peter Tosh, you name it. All of them came from nothing. You know what I mean? Mm. So even in that, if you look at that, the ridiculousness of them rising from nothing to becoming world superstars, it's, it's ridiculous. It's just like the statement, if you know it. If you, if you see where I'm going with this, it's ridiculous. It's not possible, you know? So what the devil is doing and what the music industry is doing is, is basically tempting you with something that you already own, but because you think that you own it not, you know what I mean? Because you don't understand that you don't need to to be endowed with wealth and material and what to be rich, to be to be to be a man, to be fully feeling like a, a happy, loving, livable man. You know what I mean? You don't need all of this. You know what I mean? And it's, as I say, it's, it's the same thing that the music industry is doing. So an artist that is born in Trenchtown is born with nothing. One day. We are going to, all the world is going to hear our music. He never said one day we're going to be rich. He never said one day we're going to be the greatest artist in the world. He never said that. He said one day all the world is going to hear this music, Rasta. They're going to love it. They're going to listen to it. And they're going to see Rastafari vision. And that has manifested itself. And this is, this is, this is from, from a ridiculous place, as I, as I keep saying. Because when you think about it in, in, in reality, it is ridiculous for that to have happened. You know what I mean? So, and it's the same thing as I say. So if the artists look at life like that and, and look at the, the message that they've been given to give to the people as a greater gift than any value that you can ever attain tangibly, then you will never be caught. You will never be entrapped. You can never be tempted by the devil. It's not possible. You know what I mean? Bob Marley knew that. That's why he became the greatest artist on the plane of this earth because he knew that from very young. He already tapped into that and he knew that, okay, all I have to do is to submit to this power. This is the power. I don't submit to any other power. If you notice everywhere I go, you know, there's no state. There's no, there's no government. There's nothing that can confound the mind of a man that has already submitted to a higher power. You know what I mean? So it's as simple as that. So artists are not doing that. So they are susceptible to all of what the temptations of the business, of the music business, are doing. So whether they're saying spiritually about Africa, blah, 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 they have not yet seated themselves in that place where, you know, the, the wholesome man is already there. I don't need to be made up. I don't need to be, I don't need to have Nike shoes. I don't need to have Clarks even. I don't need to have nothing to be the wholesome man. It's already there. I've already accepted that. You know what I mean? So that is the difference, you know what I mean? And, 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 and yeah, if you, if you understand in, in all of that gibberish. That's not gibberish at all. I understood all of it. And I was about to say, it's a brilliant encapsulation of the situation. Phew. I don't know about you, but I needed to give my brain a little rest after that. What an incredible guy Micah is. So full of interesting insights, philosophizing, and of course, he's a brilliant musician. Part two will be out very soon. Keep checking www.thecanary.co for that. But to be going on with, here is one of Micah's most recent releases. Yes, this is Zion's Gates by Micah Shemaya. Zion's Gates. Check this out. Ignorant. Infants get for age protected, so says the great cross. Only a man with these conditions in his heart will stand the test of time for that great war. For that great war. Desire. Zion Gate Will you be there on that great wall? 
they pop and they piss off on this road to Zion Gate, going up to Zion Gate. Will you be there on that great wall to Zion Gate? Yeah. And that's it. Part one of this very special episode of Top Lung Cage is done. I'd like to thank my fantastic guest this week, the incredible Micah Shemire. Follow him on Twitter. It's at Micah Shemire. That's always behind the scenes. Thanks to the love of my life, the gorgeous Nicola Jeffrey. Follow her on Twitter. It's at Nicola C. Jeffrey. My man behind the booth, sound engineer Gav Pause. Follow him on Twitter. It's at Pause with AZ Radio. And my in-house singer, it's Ray Star Music. Follow her on Twitter. It's at Ray underscore Star 113. Thank you to the Canary for uncaging me. I will see you for part two soon. Uncaged.